Olive. This is Mini, and this is Olive, and this is their roadmap to success. Um, as, you, as you saw in the video above, she was barking me when I moved around, now we're best buddies. Um, now, if I move around at this point, she may react or not, but I'm just gonna be sitting here. We're gonna talk about all the things we covered in this session. So basically, um, I think what's going on here is, here's the older dog, here's the puppy. Uh, puppy's pushing her boundaries a little bit, but I think that, and you can tell she's a little bit, she probably could lose a couple pounds, same as me. And uh, so they were really, uh, I think they're under exercise. They didn't have any rules and they were able to tell the humans when to pet them. And so I think that many, come, that's passive training, we'll talk about that in a minute. I think Minnie thinks that her job is to be in charge of everything, because there's no rules. And so she thinks she's the security dog of the world, but nobody listens to her, which stresses her out and amplifies the unwanted behaviors and makes her more barky, more all the rest of this stuff. So uh, we wanna flip the leader follower dynamic. And the way that I like to do that, uh, one of the ways I like to do that is by uh, starting to enforce rules and structure. But before we get to that point, exercise I think is gonna be a big component. So I went over some creative ways of exercising the dogs. We showed them the laser. Minnie wasn't interested, but she might be interested when I'm not here. Uh, Olive was definitely interested in the laser. Um, so chase the animal, chase around the laser outside or inside the house or whatever you want. Um, you know, to keep track of how long they're chasing if you're kind of trying to qualify how much laser time they need. Make sure the laser doesn't go in your eye or their eyes. Also try not to, if you use a laser, let them have a clicking sound. Every once in a while, if you start clicking and the dog starts looking around, then take the batteries out. When you're watching TV, click it. A minute later, click it again. So we call it disassociation or desensitizing. Um, and eventually the click won't no longer represent. Um, so that'd be one of the options. Another one is the treat toss on the stairs. Go to the top of the stairs, show the dog that you have a treat. You, know, you gotta get in the crevice, the crevice there. Here, I'll get it for you. So throw it down. When the dog jumps and goes to the bottom of the stairs, come up with a funny word that means going out south. Call it South Pole or Bermuda or Cuba or whatever you wanna say. Remember, anytime the dog gets a treat, the treat should go in the mouth first, unless you're doing counter kissing. Uh, the treat goes in the mouth first, and then the dog hears the command word immediately after. So as soon as the dog licks up the treat, you say Bermuda. Then you call the dog to the top of the stairs and give another treat and call it Canada, whatever you want to call it. And then up and down they go when you count each down up as one. I do it with the dog separately until uh, Minnie's like, you're crazy. I've been down there 12 times. I'm not going down there anymore. And that's probably about to be her number. Olive's probably going to go through quite a few more. And we want to do it, uh, remember, uh, with an empty stomach, about 90 minutes after eating. Dogs' stomachs can get in, in trouble if they're full when they're moving around. So, um, and basically do it with each dog separately until you find out what their maximum number is. And now you know how much their maximum is. Then we're gonna exercise them 50 to 75% of that maximum number multiple times a day. Five minutes of throwing the treats up and down the stairs is equivalent to a 30 to 40 minute walk. And we can do it a lot more efficiently. Uh, we're here in Nebraska, so sometimes it's, it's crappy outside because it's too hot or it's too cold or it's too icy. Well, the, it's climate controlled. The stairs are always gonna be a perfect 70 degrees. So um, the idea is to do that with both dogs separately. Another way you can do is fetch if the dogs like to fetch. Um, you can also do something called scent games, where you have the dogs in the other room, you hide treats. Like if this is the leg of the couch, I take a treat and I run it just right around the behind it. And so the dog comes around, oh, and finds a treat. And I would say like search or hunt or find every time they lick up the treat, so then I create a game. Now they're using their nose, which is stimulating for them mentally. There you go, buddy. Up. All right, um, so uh, those are some forms of exercise. You wanna kinda of play around with the quantities and the frequencies until eventually the dog's behavior overall is pretty good. Um, and when he starts biting at Minnie's collar, or if Minnie barking like crazy, I want you to interpret those things if instead of them being naughty, as the dog's way of saying, we have too much energy right now, can you exercise us? And once you make that transition and you start doing that, uh, you're, it's gonna be a game changer. Now, he, he, she also gets the zoomies and likes to run around about 7.15 at night. So if her guardian started every night at 7 o'clock, do the stairs for five minutes, you can kind of take care of that. Some people like the zoomies. Nothing wrong with the zoomies. But you can also set the dogs up for success. If we're going to have guests come over, exercising the dog before the guest comes over can really help. Just make sure the dog has at least 15 minutes before the guest arrives. And it's something like Thanksgiving where they're going to be here for a while. I might exercise the dog. An hour later, exercise the dog again. An hour later, exercise the dog again. And then the guests arrive. So we kind of deplete more energy beforehand. Um, all right, so that's uh, exercise. Uh, some of the rules we talked about, not being allowed on the furniture right now. Uh, this shot looks better if I have dogs in the shot, so this is why I sit while we're doing this. Uh, but the higher a dog sits, the more rank or social status. So if we let the dog sit at the same height, we say we're peers. She likes getting up here. She used to. Might be a little bit too big to get up here. But uh, this is, I look down on the humans. I have more rank or authority. So I would never allow this. I would only allow this after, and remember these rules should be in place for a minimum of two and a half months, if not, or as long as the problem's going on. 
So at the end of that, and remember, breaking a rule to reward the dog is not the best thing to do. Now, after their behavior is adjusted and they're feeling better and you feel like sharing your couch with the dog, you can invite the dog, one of the dogs up or both of the dogs up. That's a one-time exception and it's for good behavior. At the beginning of the session, she was growling at me and I wasn't worried about her doing anything, but she was sitting on her top of her garden growler next to her growling. Well, not doing something, anything your dog does in your presence you don't disagree with, you're saying, I give that my seal of approval. So what I had the guardian do, as soon as she started growling, she, got, she lost her couch privileges. So once she does get to the point where she came back on the couch, that's with an invitation from a human and only for good behavior. And if you don't have good behavior, you have to get down. Uh, or if you invite uh, uh, Olive up here and then she gets down to drink of water, when she comes back, she would need another invitation to get back up because it's my couch. I'm just sharing it with her. It's a one-time ask. Uh, let me see. Other rules um, not being allowed uh, around the uh, from in, around the work island when the humans are eating. Not allowed between the work island and the counters when we're cooking. Having to sit before you go to the door. Remember for sit, and this is the important one that you remember you're going to apply to other situations as well. I go to the door, I say sit once. If the dog doesn't sit within three seconds, I walk away and sit nearby and wait 60 seconds. Then I go to the door and I command the dog again, sit one time. If they don't sit, I walk away this time and sit down for two minutes. Next time I sit down for four minutes and then for eight minutes. I keep double length of time until eventually when I go to the door and say sit, they sit down and then as soon as the dog sits, I open the door and let them out, go out. Now if Olive sits and Minnie doesn't, then Olive gets to go out and Minnie does not. We're paying based on performance. Eventually the dogs will go sit at the door as they're saying, wait, does they want to go outside? And you can do it both directions as well. So the equation is you want something as a dog, here's your conclusion. In order to achieve that, you have to do something for me first. In this case, sitting at the door. Now I'd like the guardians also, uh, the guardians uh, go out of their way to make sure that they're treating both dogs fairly. But if I say, uh, what I like to do is, I call it coffees for closers. I pull out one treat and say, come. Whoever comes and sits gets the treat. Whoever comes second doesn't get a darn thing. I'm paying for first place. Once both dogs, once the other dog recognizes, wow, Olive keeps on getting those treats, I'm getting nothing. I used to get one even though I sit over here. Now I gotta work for my food. If they get to the point where they both come at the same time, then I can tear it in half and give each dog a treat. I will pay this, them both if they're given the same performance. But right now they're not. Olive's given the performance, Minnie's not. And Minnie gets paid anyways. So pull out a treat, like pull out a little ramekin, put like five or 10 treats in it at the beginning of the day. And by the end of the day, make sure you're done with that. So I think you just can remind yourself to just have a little come. And after a while, they're, now they're competing to be obedient, where right now I think they're competing to be disobedient. Crash, that's my word for lay down. Okay, so um, let me see. Um, uh, don't let the dog run out the door ahead of you. Don't let him run up and down the stairs. I talked to you guys about how to do that. If you forget how to do that, let me know, and I'm happy to go over that with you. I didn't go over it with you guys today, but I would recommend you get a dog bed and put it in the room somewhere so when you take away the furniture, that way they have a place they can go. Where your paper shredder is probably a good place to do it because it's a little bit out of the way. Your, the way your room is set up, I want to make sure it's convenient for you. So that little jealousy right there. And this guy has treats and I'm guarding. And so again, competing for not the right things. Um, all right, come up here. Minnie, come on up. There you go. Come. So I'm gonna take my loot and I'm out of here. So she's a little bit nervous and anxious, and I think that's amplifying a lot of these things. The more that the guardians act like leaders, the more she's gonna respect their authority and ability to control the situation so she doesn't have to. Like this, a lot of dogs climb on top of you if you have a balanced dog, not a big deal, but if you don't have balanced dogs, the dog says, I can do that whenever I want. So I prefer in this case that the dogs don't get up on this unless they're invited to come up. That way the human's deciding, not the dog. Um, uh, let me think, what else? Uh, there's something I wanted to go over uh, about that right now. Oh, for feeding. Um, so for feeding, make sure that's another rule. The humans who is feeding them is gonna eat something first. I have rule, I have webs on my website, I have some called structured feeding. So if you find any of these videos, all the topics I'm talking about here, if you wanna watch a video where I dial down on it like I did in the video above, go to doggoneproblems.com, click where it says dog training tips. If it's a laptop computer or a desktop computer, on the right side there's a search box. If you're on your phone, it'll be at the bottom, the second field from the bottom of the page. Type in structured feeding. It'll explain how I do that. And I would feed her first, unless she's being a pistol, then Minnie goes eat second, because again, I'm paying based on performance. Performance, in this case, being the behavior that I want. Okay, um, let me see. Um, uh, 
one of the other rule, uh, well, I guess those are the rules. Um, I, I'd also like the guardians to get them, a, uh, make sure they have plenty of chew things. Uh, when dogs are stressed, they like to chew. So I like antlers, I like nyla bones, I like water buffalo horns, which usually outlast the dogs. I do not like raw hides because they're soaked in formaldehyde, bleach, and ammonia, and because the dogs ingest them, they can lead to a lot of health issues. Also, one of every two dogs dies of cancer, and a great way to ward off cancer in dogs is give them a carrot periodically and broccoli. They both have cancer uh, fighting properties. So once a month I get a thing of broccoli and I either chop it up or demolish it on top of the dog's food. Uh, and every, like once a week I give them carrots. And so you have interesting looking poop but it helps ward off types of cancer and it's good for them to chew on. Um, so uh, there is a, a video on how to teach the dog to go to the dog bed. I usually like to do the dog bed at the same time we take away the furniture. Remember you get those X mats, the letter X and ATS, you can get those on Chewy. And you probably need three for here, one for there. And so getting those, um, that way that, that kind of, you don't have to police the furniture, they stay off on their own. Um, we also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Uh, actually before that, also remember maintenance, those windows in the front cover up the inside of them with, with white paper, just the lower ones, so that she can't see out, she doesn't practice barking. Remove the stool from that area, don't encourage her to hang out in that guard dog uh, sort of uh, area. Okay, um, so uh, let me see. Uh, use, uh, for petting with a purpose is the dogs come up and nudge, and right there, I uh, I'll just went and pounded on our guardian. Give me attention, pet me, pay attention to me, damn it. Well, if the dog tells us what to do and we do it, then it's validating every time we pet the dog. Remember, good attention and bad attention, pretty much the same thing for dogs. I remembered what I forgot earlier. When, you come, when the guardians come home, if the dogs are excited and we pet them, or sh if they're barking, we shush at them, good attention, bad attention, same thing for dogs. So your dog's barking, ignore. Don't look, don't chastise, don't correct. Take note of what they're barking at. And now if they're barking at something outside, then I might disagree with that, but I'd like to try to let it subside. Now if they're barking at me, I absolutely ignore that. If I, because a dog wants attention. If I give any attention, any correction, any yelling, and you stop it, that's rewarding and validating to the dog. So uh, if they continue barking, I do have videos on my website teaching dogs how the quiet command. So just search for quiet or silent and you'll see a couple of videos on how to do that. But until you're enforcing rules consistently and the dogs are following those rules, listening to is optional. You wanna come back up here? It's like I can't see from that height. Um, that's all right. There we go. Come on up. Minnie, come. Olive, come. Olive, come. This is BS. That was my treat. How dare you offer it to Olive? Come here, Olive. Uh, Olive. Uh, Olive, come get it. Come on, get it. It's right here. So I'm trying to use a little jealousy and get Olive to come up to get the treat because uh, she was being not the best uh, behaved. And so sometimes jealousy can work really well. So when you guys come home, if the dogs are excited and they jump up on you, that's a way of claiming you. So try to come to the garage door and leave the screen door closed and do what I showed you. There you go. Come. Remember, every time you give a treat, the treat goes in the mouth first, they hear the command word after. So we have a screen door, that's actually the garage door right there. The screen door uh, is uh, closed so the dog can't get to us. Just wait for the dog to settle down and then when it settles down, reach for the handle. When the dog gets excited, pull your hand back. You won't even come in right away. So make sure you have a beer or something you can drink out there, maybe a chair. And it uh, takes, the, takes the time. They can't leave their energy up here forever. When the energy comes down, reach for the handle. The energy will surge, pull back. This is a form of operant conditioning. So what we're telling the dog is when, when you get excited, it stops the process of me coming in. When you're calm, that starts the process of me coming in. And after enough repetition, the dog will adopt a calm behavior because that's what gets you to come inside. Now, when they are excited, remember, if they, you pet, sit. Anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're reinforcing. I reinforced it, sit there. That's passive training. I'll talk about that in a sec. But if you pet your dog when it jumps up on you, you're saying, yes, I'm, I'm petting you for claiming me. And that can confuse the dog. So you can come up and get this one if you want. It's like, I don't know if I want to. You're holding it. I want to get it on my own. But my, my treat, my strength. So if you want it, it's right there. All you got to do is come up and get it. <laughs> Barking is not going to work. And there we go. Sometimes I wouldn't allow that, but in this case, that's good because she just hesitated and she lost because of that. That will influence her to member to want to do it the next time. Remember, outlasting your dog uh, is really important, but also using a little jealousy, helping her see, well, I didn't do what the guy wanted and I the end result was I didn't get the treat. Olive did what he wanted and Olive got the reward. 
So uh, for petting with a purpose, what we do is if the dog comes up and tells me what to do and I do it, then I'm validating the dog has authority over me and that confuses them, stresses them out. So instead, what I'm going to do is when the dog comes up and nudges me or paws me for attention, I'm going to give the dog a counter order, tell it to sit. When it sits, I'm going to pet it under its chin to facilitate that nose in the air that a proud, confident dog has. And then I'm going to say the word sit and only the word sit, not good sit, not oh, what a good job, Olive, just sit. And not sit, because sit and sit are completely different command words to dogs. Can you give me kisses? That's passive training. We're, we're not there yet. Okay, so um, you're going to tell the dog to do something. If they do it, you're going to pet them and reward them. If they don't do it, then they don't get a reward. After a while, you create an incentive for the dog to want to behave. Look at that. Somebody is making out like a bandit and somebody is not. I'm not chastising. I'm creating a scenario where if she does it, she gets a reward. She's choosing not to. After a while, she recognizes I'm getting left behind. Playing hard to get works great for a dog. So if I tell the dog to sit and it doesn't sit, I'm going to just find something else to do. And the dog's like, I'm, I, I'm SOL. So eventually the dog will come around because they miss that attention. So when the, the, when the dog tells you what to do, you give it a counter order, tell it to sit or to lie down. If it's already sitting, have it sit over here or lie down. When it sits, you pet it under its chin and say sit. And then you pet it as much or as little as you want once to an infinity number of pets. And that way, otherwise the dog would just come paw at you for attention again. And then, uh, so you tell the dog that pet, listening to the human gets rewarded, not listening to the human, nothing happens. And after a while, the dogs will start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. And we call that manding or learning to mand. And so uh, now that's a very polite way of interacting. Let's see if you want to figure this out. Somebody's figuring it out. Come. All right. So um, uh, that's manding. Um, and so eventually the dog will start prepaying for that attention to get your attention because that's what you seem to like. And now it's a much more desirable behavior. Now, if somebody comes in the room and sees I'm petting the dog and standing, they might suspect that I forgot to pet with a purpose. So someone would say sit or say paycheck to me. I would stop petting. Tell the dog to sit, if it's our, uh, and then when it sits, pet her on the chin and say, actually, you missed it. I told the dog to sit before you came in, but I, and it stood up when it heard you open the door, but I thank you, because I do forget to pet with a purpose. So it's a gentle reminder. Remember, it's positive. And even if you did it right, stop, and then it gives you another opportunity to practice again. If you get in a habit of petting with, and even if you just want to pet the dog, make sure you make the dog sit. Tell her to sit. If she doesn't sit, no pets. Play hard to get. If you get in a habit of doing this, every time you pet your dog, it increases the dog's respect for you as an authority figure, it increases the dog's confidence, and it helps it practice a behavior they want, like sitting. You look a little bit like Robert, the dog I live with in Santa Monica, just not quite as loud. Robert's a little stockier than you are too. Okay, so um, that leads me to passive training. Passive training is what I talked about earlier. Passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer you the behavior that you want. So every time he comes to me, I'm petting him and saying, come. Every time they sit, I pet him and say, sit. Every time they bring me a ball, I might say ball. Every time they Name all your individual toys. And so the idea with this is now we have a better vocabulary. Every time he takes a bite of food, maybe we call his chili and calls her mac and cheese or whatever, you know, the other, whatever they like. And so the idea is every time I take a first bite of food, I hear the word chili. So chili is a command word for me. After about three months of hearing the first bite of food, I hear the word chili, so they become synonymous. When she hears chili, there's no food in her mouth. It doesn't mean the same thing. Remember, feeding, that's also a really important one. So structure feeding. So watch that video and message me if you can't find it. Um, all right. So um, uh, passive training is just waiting for the dog to organically offer the behavior. I do it for food. I do it every time my dog drinks, takes a drink of water. I say water. Um, uh, sit. Most of us train our dogs to misbehave. They start barking and we correct them. We, they jump up. Uh, we correct them. They chew on things. We correct them. They come and sit in front of us. We ignore it. Well, now we're going to start petting with a purpose and passively training our dogs. The dogs are going to start emulating the behaviors that get our attention, which in this case, crash, are desired behaviors. The more you do that, the more the dogs are going to want to do that. And eventually, the dogs are just doing it what, the way you want. After we get about two and a half months in, they form the behavior pattern. Now, I also went over the escalating consequences on how to disagree with dogs. I'm not going to go through this in the video because uh, some dogs are not appropriate with and crash. And I want you to hire me. Um, so uh, let me see. The last thing is we talked about, um, uh, uh, well, I guess it's pretty much what we talked, a uh, summary of what we talked about. Now, insecure dogs typically are the ones that are most reactive. And the guardians start out telling me at the beginning of the session that the dogs didn't really have a lot of commands. Well, the more skills that we have as humans, the more self-esteem and confidence we carry because we achieve things. Same principle works for dogs. So I'd like you to get in the habit of maybe just try to teach the dog every other week. On Sunday, I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to find an easy dog trick. We're going to teach the dog how to do it, crash, uh, or whatever it is. 
And then all week long, every time the dog wants to go outside, roll over. You want to you want to food, roll over. You want to eat pet chip, roll over. You want your toy, roll over. Come. After a while, the dog you look at the dog, it just rolls over. And then now you have a different way of redirecting the dog into doing something else, which can be a distraction, but also boosts the dog's self-esteem because they figured out something on their own. And it deepens their respect for you because you're the one that's teaching them that. Right now, especially in your case, in one of the guardian's case, she thinks she's the guardian's protector. And so the more the guardian assumes that leadership mantle, the more that the dog is going to see, I, my job here is not needed anymore. Now I just need to be able to sit, sit, and do the things that we like as opposed to doing all the things that we don't like. All right, um, anything else you want me to go over? Kisses. Every time a dog licks you, call it kisses. I, if a dog licks me in the face, I call it love. Um, so uh, now she is uh, reactive to sometimes dogs on TV or animals on TV and some other things. So I'd like you guys to give it about a month. Most of my clients, once you shift the leader follower dynamic and start adding structure, the dogs stop reacting. However, if after a month you're still having these problems, it's got better but it's not completely done, let me know and we can set up a one-hour session to follow up on it. Now, in the meantime, if you do have any questions, please call or text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume that means everything's going great. In our society, we call the complaint. So make sure you let me know. I have thousands of videos I can share with you from other clients. I can make, sometimes make little adjustments over the phone, and I want you to call me or preferably text me because uh, I get a lot of phone calls um, from telemarketers. So text me, hey, you worked with Olive Mini, and I had a quick question about this, and boom, and I'll get you an answer pretty quickly. If you don't hear from me in 24 hours, ping me again. When I'm in California, sometimes I work with celebrities, I'm not allowed to be, have my phone with me during the session, and so if that's the case, I may not see it right away. All right, well, this is Mini. Oh, right there is Mini, and this is Olive. Black olives. So I was the panel, uh, That's how I was told to remember, and it worked. <laughs> I, and this is their roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dogs. Only sometimes you mean it.